Hello and welcome to a special edition of MTM Vegas. We're going to talk today about Elon Musk's Tesla tunnels. Did the boring company rip off Las Vegas? There's been so much controversy this week that we thought we would have to discuss it. Plus, Resorts World laid out their entire retail strategy, all of the stores coming to the new property this summer. Some of them are quite interesting. We'll go over all of that coming up right now. If you like the show, don't forget to subscribe to the channel, smash the thumbs up button, and leave a comment. We love to discuss all of these topics with you. Thanks so much for watching. Let's hit it. Let's talk about Elon Musk. Everybody says he ripped off Las Vegas. He ripped off the Convention and Visitors Authority. They finally unveiled the Tesla tunnel system, the Vegas Loop, Convention Center Loop. All right, start off. What do you think about it? Yeah, he just used it as a way to sell more cars, I guess. I don't know, prop up the stock. <laughs> yeah, he needed to sell 60 more Teslas. So that's exactly what they did. Um, I mean, I thought this was going to be kind of a mess when it was first announced. I think eventually it will probably work out well, but f for the time being, you know, short term, I, I don't think it'll be that great. You know, the cars aren't moving the fastest. You still have a person driving them. You can only get three people in at a time. You only have a few cars going through these tunnels. So I feel like you could probably walk to where you wanted to go quicker than you could after you wait in line and then get in and do the ride. So yeah, it's kind of a mess, but I, I think that was expected. And I, I know you've you know been harping on how much cheaper this was versus doing a traditional subway type of thing. So that's why they went this route. I mean, the videos from the tunnels look kind of cool, but also kind of freaky, like, <laughs> feel like you're yeah. gonna get stuck in there <laughs> if you're claustrophobic you definitely want to avoid this at all costs but uh, yeah i mean i wasn't impressed overly impressed by the system but i kind of expected it to be that way in the beginning so hopefully you know you've said they're going to bring in bigger cars so they can fit more people i think being able to fit two to three people is just ridiculous at this point yeah, the claustrophobic thing that's that's legitimate i remember i've been to like the the st louis arch and they have this weird elevator system that you have to go up and yes. you're in this very, very claustrophobic space. Where you're, like, <laughs> you're touching knees with everybody down. the whole way up. <laughs> yeah, and you're like this little tiny elevator that, that you're sitting down and uh, you can kind of see outside to where you would have, to, where the escape patch is if you did, but uh, I would not want to get stuck in one of these Teslas in the tunnel because it's so tight. But yeah, I mean, the original design was for these 20 person shuttles, which they've shelved. So that's not going to come like in six months or a year. But the next version of the system should be autonomous and they have the ability to build bigger uh, vehicles there. But yeah, I mean, somebody was arguing with me saying, no, actually, if you look at how much it costs given the size of the tunnels compared to a subway train or another system, that it wasn't cheaper. But uh, certainly nobody's arguing that it's more expensive. And to that point, every single media outlet in the entire world covered the, the system the other day. Do you think that they would be covering a people mover, like an airport style people mover system, if that's what they had installed. No, I mean, that's part of this is the marketing. Oh, so it's just a PR. Yeah. Get Vegas <laughs> on the map again. Bring them no, to I Vegas to they... check out, a, ride a Tesla through a tunnel. Woo! <laughs> and, and so some people would say, well, yeah, look what the monorail did. You know, you got this futuristic monorail, whatever, and it didn't, didn't do anything. Uh, certainly the Tesla system could end up being a big flop, um, but they spent $50 million on it. It's kind of government money because it's it's the Convention of Visitors Authority, but nobody's complaining that they just spent a bunch of money to buy the monorail. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like in the end, this has a big potential. And for now, it's going to work to get people across the convention center. And certainly Elon Musk didn't deliver everything he said in the beginning, and he should be held to account. Boring company should be. But I still think that this was the right decision for Las Vegas. Uh, I guess. <laughs> I mean, we'll see when it's all done and they have the massive pipeline coming from the airport and everything we'll see how well it works i mean it's good at least they're starting in a small area so they can fine-tune everything versus trying to build this huge tunnel right from the get-go and you know having all these problems so i guess that's the one good thing is the convention center gets to test all these things out first and it's you know a smaller footprint so they can you know tweak things quicker and easier um but we'll see i mean i, I i'm not going to go to the convention center to ride it so 
they failed in that part, I guess, to get me well, all excited about it. If anybody out there, the Convention of Mitzvah Authority is watching, I will go there to ride it. So just invite me down there and I'll be. Um, yeah, you're, happy you're, just, you're just hard up for a roller coaster at this point that you'll go. I'm just going to pretend that like there's no chance of me getting stuck in that tunnel uh, in, in the car. And if you really think about the future of this system, if they do build a full Vegas loop, you're going to be at your casino. You're going to go downstairs. You're going to call on your app a car. It's going to come and it's going to go under the entire city to bring you where you want to go. That's a pretty amazing thing that they're promising. Uh, the Underground Uber, are... essentially. <laughs> yeah, but I mean that, but that will help with traffic and everything else. I mean, yes, uh, especially true. in a place where it's expensive to build tunnels because of the caliche and the different things in the ground. So uh, I think that I'm still hopeful. I think it's great. I think the city is going to get a lot of positive attention because of this project. And I think that that is something that we should definitely factor in when we're saying it's a failure or something like that. But I'm not going to make any excuses for boring. They did say that they were going to have a capacity of 4,400 people per hour. And there's no way that this comes even close to that right now. So uh, that is absolutely the truth. Uh, maybe right now, 4,400 per week. Maybe that's what we're shooting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, I kind of don't understand why they didn't develop uh, the, the shuttle system and the bigger capacity vehicles. But I'm guessing it's just about money and uh, this was a plug and play system as far as putting the Teslas down there. And you still don't have the autonomous vehicles, which is a little disappointing. Although I would think as the technology progresses, it should be fairly easy to get autonomous vehicles within those tunnels because they're completely mapped out. There's no traffic. Uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see. But I, I still think it's good for Vegas. I still think it's fun. Maybe I'm just an apologist. But at the very least, we got tunnels with cool colored lights in them. And what, what's more Vegas <laughs> than that? I still feel like they should have just built a monorail out to the airport and called it a day. <laughs> well, uh, that's not going to I might be in the minority place. there. Yeah, I know. I might be in the minority there, but I think that would have just been, okay, cool. We're good to go. I don't know. Or or got more deuce buses, I guess. <laughs> yeah. Put deuce buses in the tunnels. See, they should have built a tunnel go. big enough for the deuce bus. There you go. It would have been uh, perfectly fine. All right. So I guess we agree on that. Let's talk about the other story that we have to talk about. Resorts World has been trickling out uh, all of the cool stuff that's going to be at their property when they open this summer. We talked last week about their full culinary lineup. Uh, of course, their resident DJ. We know Katy Perry is going to do a residency there. Now they've released the details of all of their retail stores, or at least the most interesting ones that they're bringing there. And there's some interesting ones as I went through the list. They said that they're trying to do something you know, unique, bring both kind of traditional high-end shops, but also so trendy, interesting concepts. And uh, I found a few on there that I really liked, like the Sneaker Garden, which is going to be a premium sneaker boutique, uh, bringing, you know, like Air Jordans and Yeezys, things like that. What stood out to you? I was going to say the sneakers as well. I think that will be a, a hit for sure. I, I will say the uh, Nectar Bath Treats. I know it's weird. We just talked about baths in the previous episode, but that's something I always liked at uh, the Venetian. I don't remember exactly the name of the place. I think it was just called Bath. Um, but they had this really cool, like, mint soap that you would use to uh, in the morning. And you, when you'd rub it on your eyes, it'd, like, tingle and kind of give you, like, a caffeine. I think there was caffeine mixed into it, too. So it'd give you, like, a caffeine jolt, which I always thought was cool. So I'd always, you know, go there to just buy that soap on my way uh, whenever I was at the Venetian. So I, I'm assuming they're going to have some kind of cool stuff like that that you might not be able to find anywhere else. Um, the sneakers thing, I think, will be a hit because there's a lot of sneaker heads out there. It'll be cool. You know, shopping isn't a big thing for me in Vegas because it is a lot of high-end, you know, stores where everything's $500, $1,000 type of stuff. So they don't have a lot of trendy things. So if they pull this off where they do find a couple, you know, just kind of cool hip places to, to shop versus either super high end or here's a bottle opener on your t-shirt and says, I don't get drunk, I, I get awesome type of stores. If they find the middle ground there, I think it will be unique. You know, outside of going to the outlets, I don't think that's really available inside any casinos or anything. Yeah, a couple other things that I noticed, they have Sugar Fina, which is like every casino now seems to have to have their boutique candy shop. So that's going to be what that is. There's Dr. Refresh, which I know our friend Bethany from Bougie Miles would is going to like it's a uh, kind of a wellness uh, place to get it sounds like to get IV drips and vitamin drips and all I that I still kind need of to do stuff. an IV drip. I want to do it so bad. And I feel like it's Vegas is the perfect place for it and I always forget about it or 
I don't get it scheduled, but I definitely need to do, uh, in, in so many places we'll bring them up to your room now and everything. So I definitely need to do that sooner or later. Maybe we'll do like a live stream of getting we should. IVs. Yeah, we should. <laughs> yeah. I still, nice. it's still one of the craziest things I've ever heard of. Although it's funny when you tell people they're either, they think it's the craziest thing ever or they're like, oh yeah, I get IVs all the time. It's amazing how many people do it. That that's that kind of surprises me. <laughs> yeah. On my last uh, Vegas trip, one of the guys that was in our group was in the military. He's like, oh, yeah, we used to always have a medic come over. We weren't feeling so good that day or we were drinking the night before. He'd be like, hey, come set me up with an IV. So, <laughs> so I think it's been go. going on for a long time. The other thing is Fred Siegel. They had announced this previously. Fred Siegel, a big retailer out of Los Angeles. Uh, he's going to have two flagship stores and resorts. Well, one for men, one for women. So that was reiterated here, but it does seem like an interesting lineup. Admittedly, I don't think either one of us spend a lot of time in malls or in these stores, uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, it seems like they're really paying a lot of attention to the product that they're putting out there, to what they are having in this property. And it's just exciting to see that focus, I think. Yeah, especially after uh, <laughs> recent launches where it didn't make a lot of sense and everything wasn't kind of thought out and planned i th it, you know it does give me hope that this isn't going to be another hot mess so it seems like they've really thought through what they're doing and you know they have a cohesive team that kind of developed this whole plan and worked its whole way through so i'm excited to see it for sure um you know hopefully it's a circa-esque level of awesomeness when we get there or lives up to the hype but i think it will you know that huge tv that everybody sees on the side of the building is pretty sweet. So hopefully the inside is cool too. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting it will be cool hotels, hopefully cool casino. I mean, we'll see it ourselves soon enough, just a couple of months. Let us know in the comments what you guys think about the retail shops here, but also the Tesla tunnels at the Vegas Convention Center. Did Elon Musk rip off Las Vegas? Is this something that's going to be good in the long term? Is the marketing enough to justify the cost? Let us know all of that. Thanks so much for watching this special edition of MTM Vegas. Talk to you guys next time.